What's up guys, this is Donnie here with Pugna.com and today's video is going to be something that I've wanted to do for a while, which is to do a little bit of a Q&A video. Uh, we've been getting a lot of really good comments and questions in the comment section here and uh, also on our website comment section. And so I want to just answer some of the best, most recent questions that we've gotten um, to both create more content for the channel so you guys can get more videos and also um, I, you know, people are probably not going to be checking the comment section for other people's answers. So if there is a good question, I'm going to try and find that and then use that to give you guys some more knowledge, uh, which is, I believe, why you're here, uh, since our memes are somewhat lacking at the moment anyway. So the first question comes from Joe Mills, and it was on our what are the best offlaners in 7.05 video? And his question was, what sort of item builds should you be going on offlane Magnus? Um, so there's a couple things about offlane specifically, and I'm actually gonna, we have an offlane Magnus build on Steam that I will drop in the comment section below, um, and also in the description for this video, and maybe put a link here, I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, so the thing about offlaners is that you really want somebody who can utilize a poor man shield these days. Poor man shield is extremely good, especially on tanky big health pool offlaners like Magnus. And um, so it synergizes well with him. So you're actually going to start with poor man shield and tangos. Unless you can judge that the lane is not going to be at all playable. Um, let's say you're up against like a Skywrath and Silencer with, I don't know, like a Drow Ranger or something like that. Something ridiculous where if you go to the lane of all, you're just gonna die a bunch. Um, but if you're up against the melee core and like one support because somebody else is roaming, um, or just weak supports in general, you can usually get something if you have a poor man shield. Um, because it helps you trade better with them, and also if you aggro draw the creeps, um, which you should be doing uh, to mess up the lane equilibrium, um, then you don't take as much harass from them. And just in general, poor man shield is super value on heroes with bigger health pools. So you start with that. Um, <clears throat> the alternative is in the really hard lane you get Iron Talon. And this is another thing that offlaners these days really need to have, is the ability to use Iron Talon to speed up their already fast jungling. Um, so if you go Iron Talon and Magnus, you're not going to be going Skewer, uh, you're going to be going Empower, and you're not going to be going, I mean you'll level up Shockwave as well just because that's probably his like best early game ability anyway. but. Um, if you really can't lane, you just use Iron Talon and Empower and you do a ton of damage to the creeps and you farm really fast. Um, similar to Axe, uh, or Legion Commander, or, um, you know, these other really strong offlaners at the moment. So after that, then there's a couple different builds you can go. Um, obviously you're gonna need a Blink Dagger at some point. Um, but first you really want to get Arcane Boots and usually a uh, Infuse Raindrop. So Magnus struggles a lot with mana, and generally increasing your mana pool and your mana regeneration is going to be really important if you want to be able to do stuff in the early to mid game, which is when you should be roaming around the map um, using RP as soon as possible to get a kill or multiple kills, um, and then buffing up your carry and transitioning into pushes. So <clears throat> you want to get the sustain to be able to spam Shockwave to get farm and push out lanes and you want to be able to uh, have enough mana for RP, which takes a big chunk of his mana pool. So once you have those items, uh, depending on how the game is going, and depending on what you're up against, um, you can either go in towards like a more utility build, focused around Blink Tiger, uh, Force Staff, and Yules, or you can go into more farming fighting build, um, where you could potentially go Midas if your timing's gonna be good, but also Echo Saber in addition to Blink. Um, and Magnus with Echo Saber, it became this big thing because of, I believe it was Weeha who did it first uh, with mid Magnus, but it's actually still good and viable and it helps with his mana troubles as well. Um, and then after that, you know, if you need to catch people, you usually go Shadow Blade. That's super good for Magnus because it lets you set up and. Um, helps you avoid having your blink canceled uh, so you can counter initiate better. Um, 
And you can also, you know, Shadow Blade and then whatever, Refresher, Hex, BKB, Travels, whatever you really need. Um, if you do go the damage build, then you're probably going to go into either Daedalus or Echo, uh, Bloodthorn, um, in addition to whatever other, like, utility items you may need. Um, I actually played a game this morning where I was an offlane Magnus, but we only had one physical damage core, which is a PA. Uh, and then we have a mid Zeus who got really crushed mid lane. So I went damage build in Magnus and it definitely helped us out in the fights a lot to have two people that can like jump in there and cleave a bunch and do a bunch of physical damage in addition to all of the magic damage that we already had. Um, so pretty much that is your build for offlane Magnus. You're gonna go PMS, uh, tangos in most lanes. And then you're just gonna try and mess with the lane equilibrium using Shockwave uh, to push the lane if you need to, um, you know, pulling the creep aggro back, blocking when you can, farming the jungle when you need to, and just try to avoid dying um, and get enough farm to the point where you can get arcanes. Um, and then usually by that time you'll be ready to move around the map. Uh, and then your blink dagger um, will come pretty shortly after that. Uh, and then, really, the, the name of the game with Offlane Magnus is just to counter-initiate. Uh, you don't need to be the one that jumps in necessarily to start the fight. Uh, it's usually better if you wait for the enemies to collapse on somebody else who's jumped in, and then you jump in an RP, and it's like, oh, five man RP! Super hard, except it wasn't actually that hard because everybody was standing next to each other in the first place. Um, so that's the question number one from Joe Mills. Thank you so much. I uh, hope that answers your question. And like I said, I will put a link to that Steam guide um, that you can use in-game by subscribing to it uh, right below. Cool. Uh, our next question is from Boom Shakalaka. And he asks, he or she, <laughs> asks, what about Darkseer in the offlane? Um, we saw a lot of it in Kiev. So the thing about Darkseer is that Darkseer is like Batrider, um, and honestly to some extent like Quop, um, but basically there's like a few heroes that kind of, regardless of, of how they are in the pub meta, they show up in the pro games when stuff really matters because they're so good at being part of a cohesive team and like doing a specific job way better than any other hero in the game. And so even if Darkseer's vacuum was like a 60 second cooldown, he would probably still be utilized from time to time in the pros because vacuum is actually that good of a spell. And, uh, which is, you know, why Magnus is so good because he has a vacuum and a stun at the same time. Uh, but anyway, so the thing about Darkseer is that he is a hero that does a lot, but he doesn't actually do enough, I don't think, to win pub games consistently. And the reason for that is he has this vac wall combo that does like, you know, a bunch of control. It does, it does okay damage, um, you know, unless it's the super late game where the enemy cores are really, really strong, but you kind of don't want to be in that situation necessarily anyway. Um, so in your pub games, it's like Dark here, he can lane, you know, he can lane pretty well. His ion shell spam is really annoying. Um, you might not get as much experience because your ion shells would be pushing the wave and you might not be able to get close enough to actually get the farm uh, depending on how hard the lane is. Um, but if you're in a pub and then you play with your team uh, and your team needs to then coordinate a stun on top of vacuum wall to really get a lot of uh, value out of it. So basically the thing with vacuum the vacuum wall combo is that it usually these days sets up for an even bigger play. So it's like vac wall into storm hammer and Sven cleave, vac wall into RP and Magnus cleave or somebody else's cleave, or vac wall into warlock golem and fatal bonds. You know, something like vac wall is the initiation or counter initiation, but then there also needs to be an additional like massive contribution to that fight. Otherwise, you just won't do enough damage. And so, as most of you know, in pubs, it's pretty hard to get your team to like really work together a lot. And that's what Darkseer focuses around. Uh, so, you know, yes, you will be able to land these like big plays and occasionally your teammates will follow up with what you need to win the fight off of a good vac wall, but chances are 
you can do a lot more work with, say, Magnus or Axe uh, or Enigma or Legion Commander or Abaddon or somebody like that uh, because you can just jump in the middle of the fight and do a ton of damage and a ton of control all by yourself. Um, so that's, you know, Darkseer is a great offlaner when you have a good team around him. And he's, I suppose, a passable offlaner at the moment. But if you really want to be, like, contributing heavily to winning games from the offlane, at the moment you really need to have, like, serious disable... Uh, serious like contribution to the team fight by yourself and that's not something that Darkseer necessarily does. Um, so the next question is by Huo Ben Peng, hopefully I'm saying that correctly and it's a, sort of a follow-up question which is what about Faceless Void? Um, I think it was what like was it right before patch 7.0 that Void was really popular? I want to say it was like 6.88, 6.89, I don't know. Anyway, with the whole like offlane void going maybe Vanguard or or something like that, um, I can't quite remember what the build was, but I know that uh, Keizu played it a lot and Wagamama played it a lot. Um, and void was super strong in the offlane because he had higher base damage than just about any carry. Uh, he had good armor, he had time walk, which undid damage, so you could like harass the, the enemy support and then time walk off their right clicks, so you got good trades every single time. Um, and so, at the time, that was, you know, that was fine, and, and Void can still do that, but he also doesn't contribute in the way um, where if he is forced out of lane, his jungling is not that good. And, I mean, yeah, you can go Iron Talon, you can hit creeps, you can use Iron Talon active, he has good damage and armor, but he doesn't have, like, the farm accelerator that Legion Commander does with counter, uh, press the attack, um, basically her whole kit. Uh, Axe has counter helix, uh, and cry to take less damage. Magnus has cleave and extra damage, uh, whereas Void is just, like, hitting creeps. And so... In that sense, Void is a weaker offlaner, uh, just because if he can't bully the, the uh, safe lane, then he's kind of like in trouble. And he's not going to contribute a whole lot because Void is a, is a hero that needs items. Um, and yeah, you can go like blank agonims on him, but then he doesn't really contribute to anything else but Chronosphere to, to team fights. And if that's enough for your team, cool. But all the other offlaners that I mentioned can like win fights on their own almost if they get good enough initiation. Um, and so, in addition to that, Void's Chronosphere is a little bit harder to use than say like an RP or a just like a blink call from Axe or a duel. Um, so while Void still has potential, I don't necessarily know that he's like that strong of an offlaner. I think people are starting to run him in the safe lane. Um, and there, I've actually had a few successful games in the safe lane with Void recently as well. And so I don't know. He's he's going, he's one of those heroes that's like you really want him to be in the meta because he's so fun and like creates these really ridiculous, uh, you know, hype moments in games. But at the moment, he just doesn't really do enough in the off lane to justify picking him in a game that you really are trying to win, which is what ranked MMR is supposed to be. Anyway. Uh, final question that I'm going to cover today is by Sandy Kosada, and they ask, on what situation is it best to have one solo support? And the answer to that is pretty much never. <laughs> um, now, if you're asking, is it okay to have one solo support and then one roaming support? That's kind of like the general setup that most... Um, that's become the meta, really. That's that's how most games are played now. Um, and so in that case, yeah, you have one hard support who handles most of the warding and the supporting of the hard carry and lane uh, and the stacking and the pulling for them. Um, and then you have one support who roams around the map and pressures the other lanes or potentially comes and help, helps the safe lane if it's difficult. Um, and that roamer's job is to, you know, disrupt other uh, the other team's pulls uh, grab bounty runes, harass the mid laner, maybe snipe a courier if they can, 
um, and just generally be kind of like disruptive across the map. Um, and in that case, it's great to have that support and then you have your like real support. Um, but if you're asking, is it okay to have one support and then like a jungler and then three other cores or, uh, which happens pretty often at certain MORs, um, then generally that's not gonna be optimal. Uh, because if you think about it, that one support still needs to be there with the hard carry. Otherwise the, the carry is gonna get pressured by the offlaner. Um, but at the same time, the other lanes are not gonna be pressured. And that means that the mid laner on the enemy team is, or opposing team is gonna have a better time. Uh, the opposing safe lane is also gonna have a better time and potentially be able to have that support or both of those supports rotate around the map freely. Um, that's just not a good situation for your team. So if you just have one support, you're kind of setting yourself up uh, for a hard game, just in general. Um, and you know, there are some supports that you can pick, like <laughs> generally if there's four cores on my team and I'm the last person to pick, and, or uh, people are insisting on playing cores or somebody insta locks a jungler, you know, a good bet is to pick a hero that's gonna buff up the other heroes and just kind of like try and make it to late game where you have four cores and um, a hero that makes them even stronger. Uh, so like Ogre Magi or, um, I don't know, <laughs> Magnus, I guess, or somebody, you know, somebody that like helps those four cores be even stronger as cores uh, because they will also have to split more of the farm. And that's another thing that having two supports helps with is that there's more farm for the other three cores to like distribute between them. Um, whereas if you have four cores and you have one person taking the jungle, let's say you have a Meepo mid and you have an a Bloodseeker jungle and you have an Axe offlane. Axe is going to use his jungle, Bloodseeker is going to take that jungle, and then Meepo, who normally would take a bunch of the jungle to accelerate his farm with the second and third Meepos, no longer has those resources, so he's going to get slowed down, and since Meepo is a high momentum hero that needs to be ahead, really, to have his best impact, you're kind of like stunting the growth of your team and making it much harder for all of the heroes involved to play. So basically you never want to have just one solo support. Even if you think that you're a good enough support to do that, um, it's just generally not going to be a very fun game. Especially if you spend like 40 minutes just buying Ward Sentry's Dust and TP scrolls and you end up with like four underfarmed carries uh, and you spend like you know, 40 minutes trying to support these guys to victory. Not really a good time. So generally you want to have two supports, um, at least to be able to disrupt what the enemy team is doing. Uh, anyway, thank you guys so much for your questions. Uh, this is Donnie with Pugna.com and keep the questions coming. I'm going to try and make one of these Q and A videos like once a week, maybe once every other week, depending on how many questions we get. Um, so keep the questions coming and hope you enjoy. Talk to you later.